good to be here. Let's just take a moment and just wish somebody who's next to you as we just get ready to worship. Uh, if you can just move around, maybe wish somebody. Give them your name. Let's just open the Psalms 95. Have your Bibles with you. Psalms 95. I'm going to read from uh, verse 1 onwards. Are you there? Okay. It says, Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us extol him before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and singing. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry lands. Right, shall we just all say this together? Come, let us worship. Let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker, for He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture, the flock under His care. Right, this uh, Psalms, we've been learning about worship, and this Psalms, you know, it, it just talks about the various ways we can worship God. We can, we've been learning about it. You know, we can clap, we can sing, we can dance. Amen. Right? So, as we get into His presence, let's just be free in His presence and say, God, we're coming for You. We're here for You. We're here because, not because it's a Sunday, Lord, we're here because we want to worship Him. Amen? Right, shall we just lift up our voice to Him? To You, O God, to You, O God, we just lift up our voice. Yes, God, we just lift up a voice of praise to you, God. Come on, just raise a voice to Him. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Holy Spirit of God. Oh, won't you come and be enthroned in this place, Lord? Oh, we want to kneel before the Lord, our Maker. We want to kneel before the Lord. Oh, our hearts are open To you our hearts are open Come on, just lift up a voice to him and say, God, we worship you Thank you, Jesus cries out to Jesus Oh, won't you be enthroned in our praises Won't you be enthroned in our praises, Jesus Come on, just lift up a voice to Him and say, God, we come here to acknowledge Your goodness, Your greatness upon our lives, Lord Oh Oh, as we come as we come we want to kneel before the King. We want to kneel before the whole Majesty and Glory. Oh, to you our hearts are open. Nothing here is hidden. You are our 
Your fire fall down. To you our hearts are open, nothing here is hidden. You are our one desire. Yes, you are, Jesus. You alone are holy, only you are worthy. God, let your fire fall. Shall we sing that again? To you our hearts. To you our hearts are open, nothing here is hidden. You are our one desire. Yes, you alone, God. You alone are holy, only you are worthy. God, till fire fall down. Let our praise be your welcome. Let our songs be a sign, cause we are here for you, oh you Jesus, come on, yes we are here for you, lift it up in this place, let your breath come from heaven, fill our hearts with your life, cause we are here for you. We are here for you. Let our praise, come on, let it be a welcome for him. Let our praise be a welcome. Let our songs be a sign. We are here for you. For the King of Kings, we are here for you. Let your breath come from heaven. Your breath come from heaven, fill our hearts with your life, cause we are here for you. We are here for you. Come on, lift it up to you, our hearts. To you, our hearts are open, and to you, you see our heart, God. I want desire. You alone are holy, only, only you are worthy. You God, let your fire fall down. To you our hearts, to you our hearts are open. We open our hearts to worship you, God. You are our heart's desire. It is what we need, God. You alone. Shout, be your anthem, your renown. Let it fill the skies, cause we are here for you. Oh, you still this place, God. We are here for you. Only you, Jesus. Let your word come from heaven. We are here for you. We are here for you. Come on, to you our hearts are open. Open up your hearts to Him. To you our hearts are open. Nothing here is hidden. You are our one desire. You alone are holy. Fire fall down to you, our hearts. To you, our hearts are open. Back to you, nothing is hidden from you, God. You are our heart's desire. You alone are holy, only you are worthy. God, let your fire fall down. Oh, let your presence, God, let your fire fall down. As we welcome you, Lord.
Why don't we just give him a clap offering and say, God, we welcome you in this place. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, we welcome you with our praise, God. To you our hearts are open, nothing here is hidden. You are our one desire. You alone are holy, only you are worthy. God, let your fire fall down. Come on, let's just open our hearts to Him. To you our hearts are open. We open our hearts to you, God. We open our hearts to you, Jesus. Oh, yes, you are God. Alone are holy. Only you are worthy. God, let your fire fall. Yes, God, we just welcome your presence in this place, God. We welcome in the praises of your people. Lord, that your word says, God, that you will inhabit in the praises of your people. And Philippians chapter 4 verse 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen? Do you believe that I can, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens me? Why don't you look to your neighbor and say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me.
are you singing? I believe, I believe. Right, sounds good. I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe. Come on, lift it up. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. We thank you, Holy Spirit. You are the Lion and the Lamb. Sin of the world, his blood breaks the 
stand before you, God? Who can stand before your works of God? That Lord, you said, God, that every crooked path, you will make it straight. Who can stand in your presence, God? When you say a word, Lord, it is done. It is done in heaven. And no weapon fashioned against us shall prosper. For you will go before us, God. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Lord? Come on, lift it up. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? No, nothing can stop the plans. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Come on, one more time. Oh, who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? to you Jesus and that at your name oh God every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess God every knee will bow and every tongue confess Lord at your name blind eyes will open at your name demons will have to flee God because your name is all powerful almighty God Didn't want 
What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Your name is powerful, God. We just worship you, Jesus. And at your name, every knee shall bow. Welcome your presence here. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That you broke this, the curse of sin. You broke every chain and every yoke and every bondage, God. Now we're set free by the finished work of the cross. Oh, yes, Jesus. When peace like a river
Father, we just thank you so much that we could stand here and, and just sing and declare that it is well. It is well. Because, Lord, of what you've done for us through your son Jesus on the cross for us. We are grateful, God, this morning. We are thankful. Thank you for what you've done for us. Thank you for the blood that was shed for us on the cross. Thank you for the work that was finished for us. Thank you, God, for you being so rich in your mercy. With this great love with which you loved us, oh God. That even when we were dead in our sins, you would raise us up and you would make us sit together with you in the heavenly realms in Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, for that. Thank you, God. I want us to take a moment just to pray and just pray over Pray over us, pray over our, our lives. I just want to pray especially for breakthrough in one or more areas of our lives, personally. The anointing of God, that is the work of the Holy Spirit, God's Holy Spirit, is the anointing that destroys, breaks, dismantles every yoke, removes, displaces every burden, the Bible tells us. In 2 Samuel chapter 5 verse 20, after David defeated the Philistines, he, he declared God as the God of breakthrough. He said, my God is the God of breakthrough. My God has broken through over my enemies. It's the picture of a dam just bursting out because the waters are so big, so powerful. And David declared God as the God of breakthrough. So this morning, we're going to take a few moments right now. If there be one or more people here this morning, you say, God, I need a breakthrough in my life. I need God to break through. In my circumstances, my situations, over my, you know, whatever I'm facing, enemies that I'm facing, things that I'm facing, I want God to break through. The Bible shows us that God is the God of breakthrough. So I'm just going to pray and I want you to just agree with me. Say, God, yes, that, that's for me, God. That's for me. Let's pray together. Father, in Jesus' name, you are the God who breaks through. You did that for David. You did that for your people in the Bible. And this morning, Father, we are praying that you would come as a God of breakthrough, that you would move as the God of breakthrough in each of our lives. Father, I pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit, because we believe it's the anointing that destroys yokes, it's the anointing that removes burdens. Father, this morning in this place, in your presence, we pray for a release of the anointing of your Spirit to cause a breakthrough in our lives. Father, I pray that where people have faced consistent resistance, opposition, hindrance, and are unable to see an answer to their prayer, unable to see a promise of God being fulfilled, unable to see bondages broken, unable to see addictions broken. Father, this morning in Jesus' name, release the anointing of God to break every work of the enemy and a breakthrough over our enemies to break through in our circumstances to break through over our sicknesses and diseases to break through over financial lack and need and to break through closed doors to break through opportunities that have been withheld from us to break through in the areas of our workplaces where promotion advancement should be released God Father we pray for breakthrough God, we pray for breakthrough for our city as well, God, that the kingdom of God will advance in the city. That there will be a breakthrough over the spiritual atmosphere in the city, God, that souls will be brought in to the kingdom of God. Come as the God of breakthrough.
We thank you, Father. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You may be seated, please. This morning we have uh, a baby dedication. So I'm going to, uh, Renee and Anna want to dedicate their daughter. So they'll be coming up. Church, um, I was thinking about what I should share, what I should say. Um, I think we saw God's favor throughout the pregnancy. Um, there was a period during the pregnancy when Anina had uh, very intense back pain, and uh, sometime after this had started, there was a healing service over here, and uh, she got prayed over by one of the one of the elders over here and she was she was healed uh, a few days after that so throughout the pregnancy we saw god's favor it was a time when my elder one had started school and uh, you know we were able to manage all of it uh, only because of god's favor there were moments that now we are able to look back on and laugh uh, there was a time in the in the delivery room when uh, anina was actually negotiating with the gynecologist for uh, a pain reliever in the delivery room so <laughs> Uh, we can look back on it now and laugh. And um, when when uh, Atalia was born, so that's the name that, that we gave her, Atalia. We, as in as in the case of our elder one, just could not agree on a name for several months. And finally, when it came down to having to fill the name in the form on the certificate that had to be submitted to the hospital, we finally just said, okay, you know, uh, this seems to be something that we we can agree on. Uh, we looked up the meaning online and it said God is great and so we said you know that that sounds great so let's just do that let's, let's we, we'll, uh, we want her to declare that God is great through her life so we went ahead with uh, Atalia and then later on sometime when I was looking up a reference uh, somewhere in the Bible I found out that Atalia with a, a, an A-T-H she's an A-T-A but an A-T-H happens to have been the daughter of Ahab and is not very favorably spoken of in the Bible. So, uh, I, I don't know if you all have seen the show, Mr. Bean, when he gets, when he panics, what happens to him. So, I sort of had my Mr. Bean moment at that point of time. And uh, what I did then is our, our fellowship uh, at uh, Mustard Ministries, uh, Pastor Manoj, who pastors South also, I immediately called him up and said, you know, what do I do? Should we change the name? I'll change the name if, if we have to. <laughs> But he said, what do you guys do before you declare a name? I said, we prayed over her. We declared that, you know, the name means God is great. And she's going to declare that herself and through her life. So he just said one thing that, uh, that has just stayed with me. He said, that's a pact that you made with God. There's no walking away from that. So that's what we just want to pray uh, and declare over her. And we request your prayers uh, over her as well. That as she grows up, she declares that God is great through her life. Let's just stretch our hands towards Atalia Marianne Matthew as we pray and dedicate her to the Lord this morning. Father, we thank you for Vinay and, uh, and Ananya Anana, Anana and uh, this morning, Father, we thank you for blessing them with Atalia Marianne. We acknowledge, Father, that children are your gift to us. 
Father, this morning, in Jesus' name, we dedicate, we consecrate, and we present Atalia Marianne, God, back to you. We consecrate her unto you, Father. And as your word says, we pray that you would pour out your spirit upon her, your blessing upon her. That truly she'll be taught of the Lord and that she will have great peace. That the anointing and the revelation, God, that you've given to our parents and to us as a church family will be passed on to her, God. That she'll be nurtured in the, in the ways of the Lord as she grows up from, when she grows up, she will walk stronger and stronger in the ways of the Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, we call forth your plan, your purpose, your destiny for Italia. We call forth all the gifts and the graces that you have put within her, O oh God, that they will come to their fullness and their maturity, that she will be powerful in her day, in her time, in her age, O oh God, that truly, God, that she will bring transformation to the world around her, Father, that through her, that you will release transformative power, power that can change communities, power that can change the world around her, Father God, that truly she will be a woman who brings about transformation, who brings about change, Father God. That she'll be powerful in the spirit and powerful in all her natural giftings and abilities that you've placed in her. And even as we heard this morning, may you be greatly honored, greatly glorified through her life. So Father, we bless her. And we pray over our parents, we pray for Winana and Anya, that God, they would be filled with your wisdom, your grace, as they nurture, nurture the children. And for us as a church family, that we'll be a blessing to them, to help them grow in you. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Let's give them a good, good hand. God bless you guys. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, worship team. Thank you so much this morning. All right. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here this morning and to worship the Lord together with us. Let's take a moment to give to the Lord. Uh, if you want to give, uh, I just request you to please hold your offering in your hand. We're going to pray together and give. I know that some of us do our giving online, and uh, so that's perfectly fine. If you're also, also if you're visiting with us this morning, please do not feel under any compulsion to give. Those of us who are part of this church family, we give as, uh, as our act of worship and as our choice to be a part of what God is doing uh, through us as a church body. Let's pray together. We'll give to the Lord. Father, we worship you with our giving this morning. We pray your blessing on every offering that's made. We thank you, Father, for your grace that abounds towards us, that we always, having all sufficiency in all things, will be able to abound to every good work. We pray that bless that same blessing on each one here, that we'll be blessed immeasurably so that we can be a blessing for the cause of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's go ahead and receive our morning's offering. We'll also have the announcements at this time. Good morning and welcome to All People's Church. The vision of All People's Church is to be salt and light in the city of Bangalore, a voice to the nation of India and to the nations. We are glad to have you worshipping with us. Dear Church Family, we completed the 10 weeks SDBC Dimapur as on June 9th, covering 22 subjects and we had 24 students graduate from this batch. Thank you for all your prayers and support. As a person tr transitioning into being an entre entrepreneur, it was uh, incredible that we could uh, receive insight from various speakers who are part of this weekend school. Uh, there are multiple perspectives that are available or out there in the world. 
but uh, getting the true perspective that is centered on God's word is something that I took away from this weekend school. It was uh, it was a renewed understanding that we got about work. Uh, I'm part of a startup, so work becomes a fairly large uh, part of life in a startup. And it was refreshing to know that uh, not only God created work, uh, God has redeemed all our workplaces. And we take back a completely different perspective of what you can achieve when you look at yourself as a, as a minister uh, in your workplace. This was a great session um, to learn about marketplace and entrepreneurship. We got to learn a lot from uh, practical life experiences uh, of people who have actually walked the walk and um, definitely going back with a very different perspective, God's perspective on uh, workplace. Here's another workshop for the youth you don't want to miss. Maximizing potential and performance. Discover how you can maximize your gifts and abilities and make your faith count each step of the way. We've invited two speakers for this workshop, Joe Abraham, who's a leadership coach and a teacher, and Tarun Kumar, who comes with 13 years of experience in the IT industry and a lean coach. This is happening on Saturday, 24th June from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the APC office in Kalyan Nagar. Registration fee is Rs. 200 per person. APC presents the couple's dinner date. Here's an invitation to all married couples to take an evening off to unwind, relax and learn about pursuing God's purposes together. This time around, we have Dr. P.C. Matthew and Mrs. Sibi Matthew from Urban India Ministries as our guest speakers. Mr. and Mrs. Matthew have a lot of experience in counseling families and have conducted family seminars across many cities in India and around the globe. Our couple's dinner date is happening on Saturday the 1st of July from 6 to 9 p.m. You can register online at apcwo.org slash couples dinner date. The registration fee is Rs. 1300 per couple. For those who are able, we encourage you to gift a registration to one or more couples. There's a song that's inside of my soul. My father rejoices over me with gladness. So when I sing, I hope to reciprocate a part of the way he would sing over me. If we as human parents can go the extra mile to love and sacrifice for our kids, the Father Heart of God is beyond our understanding, a love that has no conditions attached, come what me. I'm overwhelmed by the Father's love. I can't understand how we would choose to love somebody like me and call me His precious. He fills me with so much joy that I just can't help but dance, sing, and I just want to please His heart. Admissions are now open at the APC Bible College for the two-year full-time course in English starting July 2017. For more information, please visit apcwo.org slash Bible College. Well, those were the announcements. For more information on upcoming events, do visit our church website, apcwo.org. Here, you can access the Sunday sermon recordings and sermon notes, download our free publications, watch our TV programs, get information on live groups, and much more. Now sit back, relax, and be blessed as we spend this time in God's presence. Are you happy to be here this morning? Great. And I, uh, I just want to thank Pastor Jay Kumar and our entire worship team. They've been, I've heard they I missed the two Sundays, but they've been doing a great job here. Uh, I don't know if Pastor Jay Kumar is here, but let's just give him and uh, uh, the worship team a great hand. They've been, you know, they've taken over the entire ministry during the month of June. And so uh, they're ministering the word in all our, across all our locations. And 
uh, just every every location, people are just so blessed uh, uh, and and rich to this se- uh, teaching on a series on worship. And so I was just so glad to hear about that. Uh, I just want to uh, mention a few things uh, this morning. Um, right after service, uh, we have our um, uh, youth meeting. So young people, I think it's like 15 and above. Uh, please stay back after service right here. You'll have uh, uh, you, you have your get together today. Uh, so the youth meet happens right after service. And uh, I just want to once again encourage the young people for the youth workshop that's coming up this weekend. Uh, you know, these workshops that happen throughout the year are really geared for you uh, to really help you live out your faith uh, in, in, in school, college, and in the workplace. So please register and don't miss that out. Uh, don't miss that workshop happening this weekend. All right, we're going to uh, make our declaration this morning. And uh, I just want to very quickly remind us about, oh, wait a minute, before we go to declaration. Uh, anybody here worshiping for the very first time? Anybody uh, that this is your very first Sunday morning here at All People's Church? We'd like to welcome you. I know our guest speakers are in our visit. Please, uh, let's welcome them. If you don't mind, could you please stand, all of you with us. Our very first uh, morning, very first Sunday here. We want to welcome you. If you remain standing, our greeters will come and give you a welcome packet. And as soon as you receive that package, you may be seated. Uh, thank you for being with us here this morning. All right, this whole group here. Uh, thank you so much. All right. Just want to remind us before we make our declaration this morning uh, that God has given us faith in our hearts. And he's given us that authority by which we enforce his work. So when we stand up and make our declaration, we're not just doing something that's part of the Sunday morning service. You know, let's do it, let's move on kind of thing. No, we are here to affirm, to declare what God has done for us in Christ. And uh, the Bible tells us in Philemon, I'm referring to Philemon chapter 1 verse 6, where Paul writes and he says, I want you to acknowledge every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus. To acknowledge, to recognize as a fact the good things God has done for us in Christ. And that's so important for us to do. So let's stand up to our feet as we make our declaration. I want you to hold your Bible high up in the air. Let's say this out loud, bold and strong together. This is God's word. This is God speaking to me. I am what God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I'm saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I'm a minister of God, a servant of Christ, and a channel of His blessing. To many people, I receive his word, I believe his word, and I live by his word. Christ is my master, and to him I am in absolute surrender. In Jesus' name, amen. I request you to please remain standing. This morning, we have the privilege of having Dr. Chirinjibi, to minister to us. The first time I got to meet Dr. Chiranjeevi was in uh, 2012 while we were uh, working together to have this conference in Delhi. Uh, and uh, so that was the first time I got to meet him. He came as a speaker in that big stadium with close to 8,000 young people. And uh, then once again, last year in 2016, we worked closely together uh, as we prepared for this second conference in Delhi, uh, the youth conference in and that's when I really got to know him, got to hear his story, uh, his journey. And I felt that, you know, we need somebody like him to come and just talk to us and just share with us uh, his own life, his own story and, and, and things that he's learned. Uh, Dr. Chiranjeevi is the general director of uh, Seva Bharat, uh, has close to, but I think uh, he'll tell us exactly how many years, but nearly four decades uh, in the ministry. Uh, Seva Bharat as, a minis- as an organization focused on three areas of ministry. Uh, They have an institute for um, community transformation, training church planters. Uh, They have a, secondly, they have an adult literacy 
uh, it's the second focus is in adult literacy. And the third area is in uh, children development programs. And they've developed their own curriculum for all of these three areas of ministry. They have several hundred, maybe like a thousand, I don't know the exact number of people working as part of the ministry all across India. And a, and a very strong, very powerful uh, missions work that's happening. He is also the chairman of the Indian Institute of Missiology. So we're just delighted to have somebody like this come and speak to us and stir us up for missions to look beyond our own church walls. Amen? So let's put our hands together and welcome Dr. Chirinjibi as he comes and ministers to us this morning. Praise the Lord. It's such a, such a privilege and uh, an opportunity and a joy for me. And also my colleagues who have accompanied me this morning, uh, Moses Benedict and another coordinator, Howard, who stay in Bangalore to be with you and enjoy the worship in all people's church. And we want to thank you for welcoming us. And I very specially want to thank Pastor Ashish Raichu. Uh, he said, you know, we met in um, Delhi two times and then we worked together on, uh, on youth conferences and youth conferences and then we got to know each other better and better. But I was introduced to him by his book. I don't remember what the book was because it was taken away by uh, some people from me. And when I opened it, it was black and white and then the name was Ashish Raichur. When he said Ashish Raichur, Raichur is a very familiar name to me because my forefathers have come out of Raichur, but they went and settled in Warangal in, in Telangana state because they were working in railways at that time. I, but I'd never been to Raichur. So I thought, you know, you must have some linking or some kind of link or connection with the Raichur. And so I fell in love with him with his first book. So I just want to confess that. And then later on, he also happens to come to Seva Bharat uh, premises. We have a facility for uh, people to come from all over the world and the nation, all different denominations, churches and missions come there and have their seminars and conferences and retreats there. And I happen to see him ministering to the young people at that time. Whatever it is, I feel that this is a God-given privilege to me to meet such a man of God. I have seen many people in my life, though I'm, I'm not so big or small as an ordinary, insignificant person. I have come across many leaders and uh, many other leaders, I did not see them. But I haven't come across a person who has such a spiritual integrity. A godly servant, a servant leader, and he's always encouraging, motivating, inspiring with his lifestyle. It's not only his messages and his work as a pastor over here or many other training programs, but as, a, as an obedient disciple of Jesus Christ, through his lifestyle, he has attracted me so much. And I think that is the greatest link, I believe, that the Holy Spirit has brought me over here. When he invited me some time back in February or March, I would like to come uh, in the April, I think. Uh, it was May 7th or so he was inviting me. No, no, I won't be here at that time. Then why don't you plan it on June 18th? I said, yes. Usually, um, uh, I, we have our own work, so we don't take up assignments outside. Uh, but I felt like, you know, I must go and see this church. I heard about this church. I'm a very poor man. I'm an illiterate for computers, so I don't go through the websites and all that to, you know, uh, see or understand 
what other people are doing. But it's a word of mouth. You know, by word of mouth, I came to know that All People's Church is one of the vibrant spiritual churches in this uh, city of Bangalore. And Bangalore is not an ordinary city by any means. And, uh, and the, the quality of his leadership and the quality of faithful believers here are so great that they are not only worshipping the Lord, but they are involved in bringing transformation in the lives of young people and others in the, in the city and planted five churches. And when I came to know that, last time, I don't know whether he remembers it or not, I sometimes jokingly, I don't know how to joke, how to cut, you know, I'm not a humorous man, but by my foolishness, I make people happy. So, so I make some kind of a comment which will be really foolish. But, you know, people laugh at it. That's what I want. Let me be foolish. So I said, okay, you have five churches. That's fine. Why not we have a conference for Karnataka for at least 5,000 people? And see that in five years' time, you have five, 100 churches planted. I, hold, I don't know whether you remember it or not, but I still remember it uh, because that was the seed of faith, <laughs> the seed of the Holy Spirit, because Karnataka needs a leadership like you know, uh, you know, a leadership that is relevant to the present context today. And therefore, I wanted this church to become a blessing to the whole state of Karnataka, though you have a world outreach vision. So I'm not belittling that. Everyone must have a world outlook and a world outreach. That is fine, but we have to start from your home. And as a city, you have all resources with human resource, financial resource, educational, intellectual, technological, all resources are available. And uh, now the state of Karnataka is like a North India in South India. People say that. That means we don't have much work in North India, but God is doing mighty and wonderful things over there. Here also, God is doing in Karnataka. God has raised many partners here who are working on their own. But if you can bring all of them together and give them as a people's church, I'm not just talking about Ashish, but as a church, if you can take up that challenge, organize for 5,000 people, say, Pretty big job. It's not an ordinary thing to organize anything. Even to cook for, you know, two persons or four persons who visit you as guests, it's very difficult for the woman to prepare the food. But 5,000 people, that can be done. Nothing is impossible with God. So church, that is my first comment on this church, that you have got to become a blessing first to the state of Karnataka. Secondly, I do not know what I was going to speak. If the Holy Spirit allows me, I'll speak it. If your hearts are prepared for that, then that will have some meaning. Otherwise, I'll stop and go away from here. Ashish was asking, you are a great preacher and you are doing such a great job. I am not a big theologian. I'm not a big preacher. I'm only a, like a broom, like a stick or like a crowbar, like a spade. You know, as a tool, you know, can be used by anyone. Sometimes I do say that I'm a simple, <laughs> I'm a simple, stupid, dirty donkey, always willing to carry anyone on my back. That was a saying, I always say that. So I, I mean it, because uh, serving, nothing like serving by love. And that's what we were taught, you know, we love the Lord with all our heart and mind and soul. And then we love our neighbors by serving them. So that's what you have been doing, then I am also motivated to do that. So when he was asking what I should do, that, just share your testimony. Well, I'm standing here to share my testimony, how God can use an insignificant person for a mightier things. And we know lots of stories from the Bible about that. You know about King David? He was not a king before he made a, he was made a king, and you know all, Moses, even though out of all his education, experience in a royal palace and all that. He went to serve his father-in-law and tending the sheep. But, you know, all of a sudden at the age of 80 years, you know, God called him, hey, Moses, I have not given you this education, these skills and all of that, just like that. You got to go and deliver my people from the slavery uh, of uh, Egyptians. Wow. And you know all of that story. 
how God used them. When Caleb and Joshua, they also attained about eight years of age, and when they were sent out to spy the place of Canaan, which they are going to possess, and all the 12 tribes leaders went there, and among them were these two people. Everybody came with their reports, saying that, okay, that's a beautiful place, a lot of, it's a very rich place, a lot of crops, a lot of fruit trees are there. Wow, that's great. But the people are very strong. They are like uh, giants. It's very difficult to overcome them and occupy that land. But contrary to that, Caleb and uh, Joshua comes to Moses and say, we can do that. We can conquer them. And everybody was laughing at them. Hey, what are these two people who conquer? We are ten people. We said, you know, that is a real report. That's really, it's a factual report they gave. But here is something different. Facts are different. Okay, what you see are different. But when you look at with the spiritual eyes and with the spiritual understanding, you know, you will come out how we can overcome them. And these are the people who said we can overcome them because of our faith in God and because of the promise that he made to us. He made a promise that we possess it. And we have that faith. All that we need to do is obey his command and go. And they did it after 80 years of age. So there is a place in the kingdom of God for a young child of even five years or even four years, even three years. I saw one three years old child reciting, you know, memory verses like anything. In the WhatsApp, somebody sent it. I saw one young, girl, young, young boy of about seven, six years. He's preaching the gospel to the people on Christmas and uh, Easter uh, events. And just like any other great speaker like Billy Graham, usually we quote Billy Graham as a great preacher. So if they were doing it. So nothing is impossible for a child or for an older man. They think that you know, they're retired and they can't do anything, but the potential that God has given to him will never last. It will never decrease. It will go on increasing until we abide with him forever and ever. And that's, that's the clue that I have in the story that God wants me to present before you. Well, there was a boy who was about around nine years. His father died suddenly with some kind of a strange disease. No doctor could uh, you know, diagnose it properly. Within 25 days, he died. And the boy and the, pair and the mother of that family was also, you know, discussing and sharing together. No, no, this is something done by somebody. Somebody played witchcraft on this man. And his own brothers were against him and brother's wives were not uh, Christians and they were against it. And they never wanted my father to live. And therefore, they played some mischief. And then uh, my father, uh, you know, died all of a sudden. And it was that time I was looking for a father. And my mother was a semi-literate and uh, she knows how to read and write. But she has some skill of uh, uh, doing some uh, sewing and tailoring work and so she was earning some money. My father had a good business and a granite business also. And all that was taken over by my uncles. And whatever little things they give, my mother used to take. And it was a uh, very hard time for us and I had two older sisters and myself, my mother. Four of us have to live and I'm looking for a father. I heard that there was a church uh, very close by to our, to, our, to our house. I'd never been to that church before. So I walked in the hot sun in 1960, I believe, or 61. And by the time I went, everybody, it was like a church like this. Uh, many children, big, you know, young boys and girls were there inside. All windows and doors are open, but uh, I was unable to get inside of this uh, church building because I was unwelcome. Nobody was caring for me. Nobody's invited me. I never knew anybody there. And therefore, but I was curious to see what was happening. So I was peeping through the windows to see what was happening. I went, you know, backside, front side, you know, two sides. And then I saw many young children or uh, grouping together, and some teachers were teaching, and children, some children were singing, and they were uh, doing some uh, action songs, and some people, are, children were doing some handwork, or you know, things like that, and enacting some skits. 
That attracted me so much, I wanted very much to get into it, but I had no courage to get in. So, highly disappointed, I left for home that afternoon in the, in the midsummer, May, Ma, May, and no shoes that time. You know, I had to walk on the dust and the hot sun. But I couldn't sleep that night. And I got up by 5 o'clock, and by 7 o'clock I was ready, and I marched towards the church, which was about 2 kilometers away from our house. By the time I went, the church was closed. The church building was closed. It was locked. Then I was wondering, yesterday there was full of people and everything was open, and today it is all closed. So I was wondering what was happening there. I just sat on the footsteps there, uh, and by the, within half an hour's time, children from all angles you know, thronged together and uh, made up some lines according to their, I think, age groups. And then they were singing some songs and they were praying. At the time, I just went and saw my size. I'm a short man. So I took my size and I stood in one of the lines. Then after the prayer, I walked into that. And that was the primary grade, you know, class, which was a VBS class. I never knew it was a VBS class. That was the first spiritual breakthrough in my life. For the first time, I came to know that Jesus Christ is the Lord. And he's the father for me. And on the ninth day, because I lost already one day, and it was 10 days program, ninth day, and when the teacher asked me, how many of you accept Jesus Christ? I raised two hands very lovingly and said, I accept Jesus Christ without meaning it much. But there was a change. And that program was conducted by three young men who were studying in Usmania University in Hyderabad. They had some scholarship. So they wanted to do something good for their church. So all the three young boys came. They used that money for conducting that vacation Bible school for 500 children. But that has changed my life. Then we mo I moved with my mother to a different place called Janagan. There was a Baptist mission school. So my mother brought me there. And she got a job in the government as a midwife. So she was touring all the villages all health work, midwifery, so many things she was doing. But I was living in the hostel and studying there. And at the age of 12, and there was another development that took place because of my teachers who led me really to Christ at the time and led me to the salvation experience. That's the time I witnessed in water baptism. That was another breakthrough in my life. But immediately after that, there was another one. That was uh, the teacher somehow motivated me. Okay, why don't you just take some of young people and go to nearby villages and teach all that you have learned. So I gathered about 30 young boys and girls from the school. It's a high school. Every Saturday after the school hours were over, we used to go in 12 teams to 12 villages. No Bible, no New Testament, no gospel, no songs book, no shoes, just by walk. And some of the boys used to go to a distant villages, about 12 kilometers away from that. So some teachers used to pay for the rent of the bicycle. So they used to go double sawari. You know double sawari? I think we're all familiar with double sawari. I don't know now whether people are familiar. So people, you know, to are going on the bicycle. Let's just go and then come back by evening, 6 o'clock. And what they were doing there, whatever they learned in the Sunday school or the youth meetings, the same theme, same lessons, same spiritual, um, scripture text, same prayers, same games, same songs or choruses. Just they used to go and teach all the non-Christians and bring them back, all these people, once a year to the school, boarding home, and to have uh, a festival for Christmas time. And these young children from 12 villages used to come by bullock carts, nicely decorated with the horns, with painted horns, it was a loving scene. And then my duty as the leader was to do something for them to give some gifts. So I used to go to the town, Jengan town. I used to take my shirt like this and ask them, my children are coming from the villages. Can you give them a Christmas gift? People gave me pencils, rubbers, ribbons, pins, buttons, and... Uh, uh, some used clothes, all that I used to gather. But I know I used to take the shirt like this. No 
plastic sacks that time, no, no bags those days, and uh, which was a difficult, you know, times. And as students, we never used to have any money in our pockets, and then give them as white gifts to them. They used to demonstrate all that they have learned in that. That's how I was doing it, and finished my high school, and then went to college. It was by God's grace I could get some scholarship. So I did my PUC, pre-university course. I think it is still there in Karnataka, PUC. Then I went to Hyderabad for my undergraduate and postgraduate studies. But it so happened, when I was in the school, I was attached to a, a, a missionary station. Uh, one American couple used to stay in a remote village. In holidays time, I used to go and help them, especially with the children ministry and health work and some social work over there and earn some money and come back to the colleges. But when I was in Hyderabad, uh, the same zeal, I started teaching in the Sunday schools, not only one, but two. I don't know how I got the money, but I have gathered about one, uh, 200 young people together and used to have a rally every month and have someone, some speaker coming and, you know, challenging them for missions. And then take these people, at least not all the people, but selected people, a couple of buses we used to hire, and take them to different villages on weekends. I don't know how I got the money for that. Still, I can't guess. And two buses, at least 80 people used to go. And we used to prepare, plan very well, where to go and all that. No, no churches there, no Christian people there. Hardly in one or two places, some illiterate Christians may be there. And I dropped them batches by batches there and give them some program, some tracks to some people and then some are to sing, and some, you have nice electric guitars, but you know, some of the, the city youth had some guitars, not electric, but tabla, dolok, and kanjar, you know kanjar, that is tambourine, tambourine, and some ball, and some tenicoid, you know, rings, all that is to take and play with the children, and uh, then go, and I used to go and climb on the walls and take a newspaper and make it like a loudspeaker, you know, I teach them, Jesus Christ is, a, you know, is the Lord of everyone. He will save you from your sins. Come and accept him. Something like that. You know. I was preaching them. And one fellow came and you know, put his cigar on my feet. So I fell down from that place. And they, was, and they were praying for the sick. And they're playing with the young people. And the women were going. I mean, girls were also there. Um, you know, they are doing all kinds of a ministry. Comfort ministry was very much for the lonely people, old people. They were doing it. And then giving bath to the children. You know, some children, they don't take bath. They don't have any soaps in the villages. So they carry the soaps and they, they take some snow bottles. You know, Afghan snow? I don't know whether you remember that. Afghan snow? Uh, that blue bottle with uh, that snow. And then some powder and all that, some mirrors. So dress them up and ask them to see your face now. So, so nice. See, when you come to Jesus Christ, you'll become like this. You become handsome, beautiful, you know, seems like that, we used to tell them. That was how we were doing. That's all our world at that time. Nobody has taught us anything about missions. Nobody asked us to go, but it is the power of the Holy Spirit which was guiding us at that time without our realization. We were never realizing that, you know, God called us and we are doing it. But, you know, the move was coming from the Holy Spirit. Well, these people used to go and stay in the nights in some village Sometimes we carry our rice and dal and, you know, oil, everything, even chilies, and ask somebody to cook for us. Or, or otherwise, we cook ourselves. Sometimes people used to give, you know, they cut chicken also and give us and stay there. And next day, have some worship with the people by afternoon and go back to Hyderabad. And then by evening, we are at our homes. And next day, you know, everyone will go to their schools or colleges. Some workers used to be there. They used to go to their works. That's how we were doing. And never knowing that out of that, 62 people will come into full-time ministry. And I came to know about, after leaving that place, after 10 years I came to know that 62 people came into the full-time ministry, including me and my wife and my Sunday school students, three of my students. And those are the leaders in those churches now in Hyderabad who are really leading big, big churches with 2,000, 3,000. They're all big leaders. I look very small before them now. And uh, the, the senior pastor of uh, Second Abad Centenary Baptist Church, which has got 5,000 people, Ephraim, 
was my Sunday school student and now he's my senior pastor. You know, I go and say, Pastor, pray for me. You know, that's how people have done. And many people have gone abroad. And one fellow, Stephen, was a very good cricket player. He has come down from the uh, flight and uh, directly came to my house in Tarnaka and said, uh, Anna, I cannot forget those days. Very eventful days. What do you remember? The way that you took me, took all of us to different places. Now the same vision I got. I'm coming down from Boston every year and conducting youth meetings and sending them to villages. I never believed that. People are in the U.S., in New Zealand, other places, and serving the Lord. So whatever was done in the name of Jesus, even though I was not a perfect you know, man of God, you know, whatever God has given me, the gifts, I, I use them. And I also encourage them to develop their skills and uh, talents. I used to have all kinds of spiritual activities, including cricket and games, and present them rolling shields, two years, two years competitions, very competitive spirit. We, need to, we used to develop. But anyway, that was one chapter, how the young people I was associated with. And then I finished my college. I went abroad, and I was in the UN World Building uh, one day because I wanted to see Security Council and General Assembly there because I acted like MC Chakla, the then um, Education Minister of our uh, uh, Government of India. In a UN World Day, I performed you know, a speech. So I wanted to do that speech. So I went to the podium there. There was no congregation, so I was speaking like MC Chagla. Then security council, I was not allowed. I went to the library, some floor, and then stayed there till 4 o'clock. I didn't have money. I purchased one flag, UNO flag, and I presented it to my mentor. Uh, on the third day, you know, after that, you know, I returned home. Many people asked me to stay back in the States, but uh, I couldn't. I represented at a world conference at their place. Very young. I was 19 years old at that time. But God's plans were different. I was trying to discover as I was journeying with him. That is how God was showing me. Well, we came and uh, God gave me a job. I was teaching in a college job, lucrative UGC scales. That time, 22,000 basic. That was a very big thing. And then um, a green ink pen, gazetted officer can sign many certificates. All that was there. But... Uh, my heart was again with this work. Though I was doing that, I used to come and conduct these activities and married in 1989 to Kamala. She was my classmate, and she has studied better than me. She's actually a doctorate. She did her PhD in Madras University in economics and education. Mine is only a donated doctorate. It is not a real PhD because... Nobody wanted to take me. I wanted to go and do my teaching, and they were telling, you don't need any research. You don't need any PhD. And then all of a sudden, World Missions Incorporated from California came forward for my work. At the age of 40, they have presented me, to my surprise, a doctorate. I did not use it for one year. Then my, some professors scolded me. You're at the age of 40, you got it. You must be grateful to God and use it, they said. Then, since then, I was using it. Otherwise, I, I was not for that. Well, we married, and God's purpose was something different. Again, another spiritual breakthrough here. Third day, our, our honeymoon was sweeping a village called Pemberthi, along with, along with the ambassador to uh, the government of Saudi Arabia, Zahir Ahmed, and then the district officials and all that. We had a big camp leveling the grounds and cutting the bushes, conduct some health program. That was a honeymoon. On the 10th day, we both happened to go to the same village where I used to work with these missionaries in summertime. We were challenged to go and serve there. We said we'll go for three months and see. In a small room, 30, a three by four place, that was our room. And three by three was our toilet and our uh, and bathroom and everything. You know, that's where we used to have a mat and slept with a, with a trunk full of our clothes. And then I'd have to 125 villages. You name any poverty alleviation program that government of India has introduced, we were the first people in Warangal district to take up and do them successfully. So we had very good favor from the government. Never they have stopped my payments. They never they had any bad remark about us 
even though there was a lot of opposition for Christians doing that kind of a work. But there, uh, with all kinds of health, education, evangelism, church planting, helping um, as very specially helping the poorer people, skill developments, even in nutrition, so many things were happening. But somehow God did not allow us, sent us back, and we went to, I went to college. And Kamala, before my marriage, she was a college lecturer. But because of me, she came with me. And in the village, because she was a woman, she was given 400 rupees. And because I was a man, I was given 500 rupees. My mother never believed. Because you were earning 22,000 basic, how come you come for 500 and 400? That's how another spiritual breakthrough. We never knew that that will happen. Well, God has placed in our hearts and uh, that burden, we did it. And then after one year's time, you know, God moved us to Chennai. There from with, with Mission India and India Bible Literature. Uh, we were working with that. And then we crisscrossed the whole country. Giving partnerships programs to people. Training them for church planting. We are not church planters. We are not theologians that time. We are just mere lay leaders. But all our Christian education, theological education has come because of boarding home, Christian high school, and because of the ministries and the association with the missionaries. That's all. And we were heading that and started with 20 people, then going around all the uh, places in different parts of India, right from Myanmar border to here in um, Gandhi Dam, Kashmir to Kanyakumari, all those places, staying for a week in every place, one, one week and training people. At that time, God gave us a vision to bring these missions together. All people who are working in different places were from South, Kerala and uh, Tamil Nadu. And because they received God's call for, uh, for Great Commission work, they left their places, families, everything, set out to these North Indian places, you know, which are like, you know, foreign places. India is a nation of nations with so many languages, cultures, habits. Very difficult for anyone to work. But they were working, and that was the second, actually, evangelical breakthrough in our country. First was overseas ministries. Overseas people came and spread the gospel in our country. St. Thomas came like that. He planted seven churches. Okay? And then, then it all was growing. And when William Carey came and the Bible was translated into different Indian languages, then people were able to take it and become disciples and preach the gospel. That's how the God's kingdom was being extended in our country. But 1975, 76, government of India has banned all the missionaries, overseas missionaries. And they're never given new visas to them. So they all left. But God raised these people to go to these, these places and serve them. That was the sovereign will of God. That was a second breakthrough in our country for evangelical work. Then God already placed them here and there. So we brought them together in partnerships so that we can see that India is transformed for Christ. That's how we started. Can we start now? I'll show you that. And uh, with that, I can, what is it? Yeah. This nation needs healing. This nation needs healing in every sense of life. Sin is a bad news in every dimension. Sin is a bad news in every dimension. It has got at least four or five, four, you know, important products, byproducts, I can say. Sin's byproducts. Number one is selfishness and greed. That's how, you know, we're all fallen through Adam and Eve. That is there. And then the ramifications of that, you can see. And then this selfishness and greed is there. And the guilt is there. In order to overcome the guilt, what people would be doing, they will seek several, you know, uh, uh, things, you know, to comfort themselves. They go for drinking, alcohol, they take drugs, they go for sex, and, you know, several things they'll be doing, but still they will not be happy. Then they will also have loneliness. Nobody can care for them. Then they live in despair. And then they, they, only, they, they only remain as hopeless people because they will never get a hope for living. They'll never get strength to stand up and uh, live a purposeful life. And then if I say another one, the hopelessness. The hopelessness brings them only to the death. And after death, they don't have anything. Poor people. 
they don't realize that there is a life after death. And that is a hope. That is our living hope. And they don't have it. So sin has got so many ramifications, the prime products. And people like to go after that, but it is a very bad news. But the good news that we have is from Jesus Christ. Jesus can save us. Jesus can forgive us. Jesus can redeem us. Jesus can deliver us from all of this. Jesus can give us a new life and new hope to live for eternity. So for that reason, India needs healing. If I want to take India, it takes half a day for me. I don't go towards all of that, but I put that one in healing the nation. And then I took this verse uh, from Chronicles 7.14, where if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Not only forgiving my sins, through me, he wants to heal the whole land. That means a man who is forgiven of his sins doesn't live for himself. There is a lot of, uh, you know, spiritual corruption in our churches these days or among Christians these days. That is, we are spiritually so well, so contented. So well and so contented and we don't know what to do next. Here is what to do next. When you are forgiven, there is a great challenge for these people to bring many more people to that forgiveness. But for that, you know, what is needed is, you know, God's call for all the saved believers who are gathered in this, in this area or in the world. Next. Wow, this is how, you know, Daniel prayed. Then I turned my face to the Lord of God, seeking him by prayer and pleased for mercy with fasting and sackcloth ashes. And I prayed to the Lord, my God, and made confession. He made confession on behalf of the people. Nehemiah made confession on behalf of the people, on behalf of the parents and the families. Why should he care for them? One should look after, you know, himself. If he's saved, fine. If he's in heaven, it's fine. It's all the life is going around by, you know, I, me, and myself. That is how it is going. But these people, these prophets have uh, done a great deal of work saying that, no, it's not only me. The nation, that was a nation which is a, a cruel nation, an enemy nation where they were slaves, but they were praying for that. And we need that kind of uh, praying for the nation in order to receive God's call for the purposes for which he called us to serve him or to live. Next. That is what we see in the Great Commission in all these verses. You all, you're all familiar with it. Matthew 28 says, go into all the world, make disciples of all nations and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit and teach them all that I have commanded you to obey. And lo, I am with you always. That is the great commission we, we, we call it. That's the last, you know, greatest commandment that Jesus has given to his disciples who are followers of him. And today, we are his followers that is given to them. 24, 14 says that, you know, if people are looking for end because people want to go to Mars now. Mars is ready. Scientists are saying that it's all getting ready very soon. People will be going there. They can enjoy. There is life there. There's water there. There's air there. So if anything happens to this world, they want to just fly to, by rocket to, the, to Mars. That is how people are looking. But here you see, it says, these are all end time events, end time signs, but end will not come until this gospel of Jesus Christ is taken to all the nations of the world. Then the end will come. Wow. What a, what a responsibility you have. Then Acts 1.8, he said, you cannot do by yourself. You cannot do yourself. You are weak vessels. Though you have abilities, talents, gifts, and money, and wealth, and all of that, influences, name, fame, everything must be, might be there. But you can't do by yourselves. It is his work, and therefore, just wait upon me. I will send you the Holy Spirit when you are filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, then you have the power to go out and reach to the people. And finally, we see in Revelations how all these people will be coming together at the throne of Jesus Christ and worshiping him. Next. Wow. This is a great commission. We have taken it. All authority is given for this. For that congregation, that, that God's family to come together, the broken family of God through Adam and Eve, God is bringing all these people together through all these missions, through all this church, with all the activities that are going on here, all towards that end. 
when Jesus Christ comes, you know, he will take up his church. There we see all those people who are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ will be worshipping him. That is the family of God which God is bringing them together. For that, this commission is given. Next problem. Wow. Wow. Somebody cared. So Seva Bharat is the one. It is in pursuance of God's vision. That vision we are working. God picked us up. We don't know. We don't have any qualification. I didn't even know English well. You know, I never studied in English medium schools. Only after going to PUC, I started reading English. And the spoken English is a scarcity for us because nobody was there around us to speak in English. But uh, somehow God used these insignificant people to lead an organization called Seva Bharat. Seva Bharat, uh, if I want to tell you, this is the largest mission organization in the world. People recognize it or not. But we are very low profile people. We don't have any materials to send out to people to advertise. We don't do any kind of advertisements anywhere. But we work in partnership with these missions and churches. We work with about 2,000 plus churches and missions, which include all mainland churches also. And uh, so that is the strength of us. We're all together, not one. Seva Bharat is not a church, okay, like all people's church. It is a church for all people in a sense that we work in, in, in close relationship with them in order to finish this great commission task. That's why we are existing next. Wow. That is making disciples. How can we change this nation of India? How can we see that nation of India can become a kingdom of God? We need people to be transformed, people to be healed. And they cannot be healed unless you follow the the great commission where you have to disciple people. So we have to make disciples in order to transform India for Christ. Next. Wow, this work, Jesus Christ has taught his disciples, 12 disciples, and then he gave them the work, you know, filled them with the Holy Spirit, and then opened up the gates of heaven, you know, through them. That is how we have to do. We have to, discipling is, you know, it's a type of training. It's not just happens in the classroom or in a boarding school, or whatever, where I studied, but it happens in the whole community, in the open community, in the open workplace, in the, in the open streets, in the open marketplaces. That's how, you know, this has to be taken up. Next. Wow. Wow. The mission is, how we do is, I told you, we assist the Indian churches and missions. If they are interested or motivated or have a vision and doing something to reproduce churches. If you have one church, that's what I told you. You have now five churches. Now, God is telling you that you have to have 100 churches. It's not for the sake of, you know, planting church. It's not to show up that, you know, you have so many churches. No, no, no. How do we, how do you say that God's kingdom is extended? The God's kingdom is extended when the gospel is preached. People accept Jesus as a personal Lord and Savior and come together to worship him. That is his church to which Jesus Christ will come back. That is a sign of the extension of God's kingdom. So whatever our limitation is, whatever our time is, our resources, limited resources are there, we got to do it. We can do it in five years' time, 100 worship groups, be it three people or 500 people, because any church will have to start with two or three people. Then afterwards we see it is growing to thousands and thousands of people. Sometimes these, these uh, auditoriums will not be um, helpful to us, nor the big stadia will not be helpful to us because the whole world will become the church, the family, the kingdom of God. Next. Wow. Now the country, our country, the beautiful country, the great challenge that we have. 1.34 billion people as in today. 134 crores, 69.6 male, 65.2 female. And for every thousand males, 945 females. But in some states, it is very less. Even in Telangana state, a new state, we have 4, 921 for every 1,000 male. If you go to Haryana, very late, they don't, men, men do not get uh, women for marriages there. Rajasthan, we don't have. So female um, uh, ratio is decreasing, that population is decreasing. And then 50% of population below the age of 25, and 65% below the age of 35, say 65 to 70%. But anyway, this will give you some idea, you know, what that is. Before... 35 years. 
4,693 people groups in India, only 15% have a sizable Christian presence. What a pathetic condition. 2,000 years have been passed since the gospel of Jesus Christ came into our land, but we still say only 15%. Next. Wow. Acts. That's it. I don't know why these people have put all that. It takes time. Can you put just one? <laughs> okay. That is your hometown, your Jerusalem. Next. Go on. Go on, please. Go on, please. Your Judea, your own culture, your nearby culture, Samaria. Jesus, not to the place, ends of the earth. That is that. That's what Paul had done it. He went and preached the gospel, planted a church, and prepared the disciples, and left the work to them. And then he, he set out to other places where the gospel was never heard. Those are the places we have to go. That's how your church is doing. I really appreciate and admire you for the world vision that you have for the gospel work. Next. Wow. Here you see in India, if we have to go there, we have Hinduism, Jainism, Buddhism, Sikhism, Islam, Christianity. And so many things are happening around the <laughs> around this uh, religious buzz, <laughs> you know, everybody's talking. Now you're Buddhist, no problem. Jainist, no problem. Only Christian and Muslims is a problem. But look at that, this kind of people. Hindus, 79.8% are there. Islam, 14.2%, but it is more. It's only according to in Indian statistics of 2011. Today, the, the, the situation is different. Buddhism, others, all these people are there. They need to know Jesus. They cannot say, who, when you say, who is Jesus? Is Jesus a stick? Is Jesus a book? Is Jesus a building? That's how people ask. Because they don't know who Jesus is. They do not know Jesus is a person. They do not know Jesus is a savior, is the Lord, is God. They do not know. They sometimes question us when we preach the gospel in the villages. That's how people are so ignorant about the gospel. Next. Wow. Look at that. In now the Kumbh Mela. You can see how many people are taking bath for the, for the remission of their sins. <laughs> right? Is that right? That they are in spiritual darkness. Superstitious beliefs. They need to be delivered. Next. Wow. Tribes. Number of tribes are there. 77% 7 of our population is, uh, you know, uh, tribes. Next. Wow. And we came out with these strategies. We don't say programs. It's a strategy, you know, how to reach out to the whole country to transform India. We got about eight things, you know, all, the, all of them there. Next, you can go. I'll take you. That is called Institute of Community Transformation that uh, Pastor Ashish has uh, told you. It's nothing but church planting training program. This is an on-site training program, training 10 people with their own pastor, with their own leaders, for their own area, for their own people, in their own language, for their own church, for their own governance. Because God placed them there. Now they have to disciple more people in order to reach out to those places. And it is easier, better than sending missionaries to those places. We have traditional, conventional missionary system in our country. They're coming from IMS, NMS, FMPB, IEM, and many others are there. They send out missionaries from one place to another place. Yes, we have to send some people to certain places, but certain places, God has already placed them. So encourage them, strengthen them, train those people. That's how we do. Each one goes to our 600 families. By the end of the one year, you see two worship groups formed, five prayer cells formed, at least 20 people baptized. Within one year of training, by the time they finish, that's how the graduation is given. That is our model. Some people may be less, some people not, but average, that is what it comes to. Next. Yeah. Churches planted uh, during the last uh, uh, five years. 18,000 T20, born-again believers. We take the people who are baptized, born-again people. We don't take the people who made decisions. Then worship groups from 48,112 have been done. This is all with the partners. Those people who have been trained. Next. Wow. Now we have language problems. Uh, this is um, simple, but we have 1,652 languages and dialects in our country. You're only speaking... Uh, Tamil, uh, Kannada and English, maybe Tamil here or Hindi. But you know, there are so many languages. At least 470, 67 languages are major languages. 234 languages spoken by more than 10,000 people. That is, yeah, 
429 spoken by 1,000, 31 spoken by 1,000 people. These are all, they don't have written script, but they, they are spoken language. Next, so many languages. And the Bible translations, we don't have in all the places, all languages. Yesterday, Kamala was in Odisha. She's doing for Savara tribes. There are about 2 million Savaras there. But 60 to 70 percent cannot read and write. So they are preparing, constructing the primers in that language by staying there for 10 days. So that's the need for us, for the Bible to be translated in their own languages. Next. For that, we have started literacy programs. We have three books. By the time they finish the books, a person will come to fifth grade standard. When I went to school, it took seven years for me. But for adults, it is only 12 months, every day two hours. By the end of the year, they'll be able to read, write, and do arithmetic, and read at least a few words from the Bible. Then they'll have social awareness, health awareness, income generation. They come to Christ, and then literacy classes will become churches. Next. Next. Wow. That, these are the objectives. Next. Wow. These are our self-help training programs that we give to them. Mostly women come there. And they earn minimum 2,000 to 12,000 rupees per month. Those people who are trained. And that is supplementing their income. Their economy is growing. That means we are also contributing to the economic growth of our country. Next. These are another, I mean, this is in um, Kashmir area. Next. Yeah, they are certified. Now they say, now see, who are coming for this many, uh, these classes? This is 90% non-Christian people. Okay? They got a certificate at the end of it. They are able to read and write. And therefore, now they can, they can live dignifiedly, can say that I can read and write. And that will open up their faculties. Literacy impact, 2001, this is so much. I don't want to give you all these figures. Nobody believes this, but this is a fact. This is underreported. It's still underreported. If I go there, my inquiry will be different. But I tell you, numbers can confuse you. But number is not a number. Number is a soul there. We don't calculate like that. We are known for systematic and measurable, you know, uh, results. Next. Wow. Children. Next. Okay. Wow. Children development program. We have a master trainers program, partner trainers program, teacher trainers program, after school clubs. Then we have curriculum that we develop for age groups, you know, 4 to 18 years. All these things are done by our own indigenous Indian people. They are not scholars. They are not experts in it. But people who are filled by the power of the Holy Spirit, they help me and we, I and those people, we prepare these curriculum materials for five age level people. Next. Wow. And next. This is all again. Teachers, this year, I'll tell you this year what has happened. This year, we have taken up 6 million children for 10-day classes. 6 million children means 60 lakhs. In order to reach 60 lakhs, we had to train 2,30,000 two, two teachers. Then we trained about 1,500 master trainers. They train in their own language areas. So by that, they reached 6 million children. Because that, I, that means 6 million pieces of literature was prepared for them. Books were prepared for them. If you come to our office, I ask them, can you give me one sample? I couldn't get any sample. That's the need in our country, the tools, the training, the people working together. That is, that is how, you know, people are trained in numbers, 500 people, 400 people sometimes in the training process. Next. Wow. I'll have to close quickly. This is all, this is a follow-up for uh, our Children Bible Club. It's a one-year-through program. In a year through program, we have sports time, study time, and spiritual time for the holistic development. Next. This is what our missionaries in all areas of life we have to produce. Uh, I think this is a different uh, slide I think you have in it. I prepared a new one. You didn't take that new one. Yeah. A for uh, arts and business and church. Media is not dedia. It's a media. And education, family, and the government and humanitarian. We want to see that our leadership, Christian leadership, is developed in all, for all walks of life, in all areas of life. Our people should be on the top, like, like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in an enemy country. That's the program that we have. 
teachers trained. We have so far 55,000 to 60. Can you imagine that? It's all in thousands. It's all in lakhs. And disciples made. Churches planted through children's ministry. Can you believe this? Churches are planted through children's work. One fellow, that Prem Sagar came to me, bald-headed man. He was very angry. Oh, two years back, I was a partner with you, but uh, you did not care for me, he said. So what can I do for you? What did you do? I did children's ministry. So what are you doing now? I planted five churches. And in each church, and he has put up some sheds also for that. And in each church, there are 35 members to 50 people. In two years' time, you know, that gives us motivation. You know, that charges us, recharges us every day, you know, to serve the Lord. That. Next. Yeah, district strategy. Then because of him, we adapted a district called Kamam. The whole district, five years program. And within, next, next slide, I think there is a the slide, district adaption. You can see every village, in every neighborhood, one or two churches. We have reached 1,245. Government has got 1,101 villages. But when we surveyed, we surveyed 1,245 villages. Commitments, that means people who came to Christ, 78,000. Baptism, 34,537. I was an eyewitness to that. The, picture, the previous picture, I was there in that conference. Okay, that is how. Now we have taken Udaipur in Rajasthan, Sonitpur in Assam, Bastar in Chhattisgarh, and also Amritsar in Punjab. So another five years we'll be working there so that the whole district, you know, can be transformed for Christ. We can see the kingdom of God grown in that. Okay, that is a strategy for Now young people, you have seen them. Next. Wow, 54% less than 25 years, 64 less than 29 years, 70 less than 35 years. Previously I said 65, this is 70. India, one of the large, world's uh, largest youth, you know, we find in India. Next generation, 35 years, they're below 15 years of age. Wow. Next. Wow. Peace stars. For them, we have come out with the peace stars, shaping next gen for multiplying disciples to life-transforming leadership for peace. Now we have ICs. I'm not comparing that. But we are people of peace, people of love, people of hope. Where is this word gone? We found it from, uh, from uh, Daniel uh, 12, chapter 3 verse. All those who lead many to righteousness will shine like stars forever. In that, two commandments are fulfilled. That means you have peace with God and you bring other people to have peace with God. Both of you will be in heaven forever, shining forever. That is a peace star. That is how we took up. Next. Yeah. Uh, the corrected slide you have not taken. It's okay. But this is how we have done it in Hyderabad. <laughs> 5,000 people just within one month's time, they paid 100 rupees and, you know, they had an open Bible quest, which is, by the time they finish, they become disciples of Jesus Christ. They make a recommitment to Jesus Christ. You know, if we are there nearly not born again, they will come to that experience by the time they finish it. That is the one we have developed. Next. Then we gave them a road map. Yeah. Personal Bible study, family Bible study, and then small group Bible studies. And to witness 10 people in a one year, lead five to commitments and baptize at least two to three people and add to them church. If there are five people coming from that, they will have 20 to 30 people added to the church in a year. All new believers. That is, a, that is the outcome. Now, the outcome is coming up. So many people are coming. They want to be peace stars. It's going like a wildfire now. This is totally an indigenous ministry, this peace stars. All that we need is study Bibles, which is a costly affair for us to buy. Yes, we cost about 1,200 rupees from Bible Society. Next. Wow. Next. We have cricket. We have taken up. Just last June first week, 20 teams have come and participated in cricket. Because all churches are coming together. A unity is coming. The young people are now being diverted from other activities and you know, concentrating on that so that they can, they can learn discipleship, they can learn discipline, they can learn leadership, at the same time learn their, their, uh, develop, uh, their talent and then compete with others. We'd like to develop an India team which is called Peace Stars Premier League, PSPL. That is what we have started. Next. Wow. Now, smart cities, 125 smart cities, government wants to develop in all all areas of life. Okay, next. Wow, cities. You can see how cities are, uh, um, you know, full of people. And everything is congested these days. But city people are most important like rural people are. 
Next, emerging middle classes, young urbanites, educated, affluent, hugely influenced people. We need to 300 to 350 million middle class Indians are there. Next, for them we have taken our lay leadership training program. A pastor and two people will come and study one year, three, four modules, within which time these two people, like Moses had two assistants, these people will assist them and then they plant churches. They will have spiritually healthy churches growing. At the same time, they take the Great Commission on their own. Tomorrow or today, the church has to take the mission forward. They have to fulfill the Great Commission, not any other agencies coming and doing with the churches. The church itself has to take up. That's the program we have taken up. Last, next one. Women empowerment. Women we have neglected in many places. Now we have started that. Empowering women, not only for the family, for the church, but also involved in Great Commission work. Next. This is a new one. Women, you can see how beautiful our women are. Are you beautiful? You look at yourselves, so beautiful. Right? So beautiful people in our country. Next. Wow, these are the people you can also say. Female infanticide, dowry deaths and rape every day. You, you read, even in Karnataka, maybe Bangalore you can get it, but whenever I go to Delhi, I read papers, there will be at least two to three dowry deaths. And if you go to Tamil Nadu, at least one or two infanticide. They bury alive, these children. And girl children are not wanted. That is the problem. Next. Yeah, at home and families, at church, women can influence. They have every opportunity and they must be released by the men from the families to serve the Lord. If they don't release, because ours is a male chauvinistic society, right? Male dominant society, right from the beginning. But now Jesus has redeemed us, delivered us. We are free now. So we must release our women also for that work. Next. Yeah. Yeah, now Muslims. Uh, our our, our, our uh, city, Hyderabad. Muslims in India. Next. Wow. Look at 17.2 crores. Muslims. India is home for 10% of the world Muslim population. And we say they are our neighbors. But actually we are uh, um, Judoabai. Isn't it? Like, like Judoabai, right? So, but we have neglected them. Next. So we have a work among Muslims. We have 120 Muslims, reaching Muslims. Seven women in Bhopal have brought 38 people baptized last year from Muslims. Only thing is they cannot have a visible church. That's only the problem. Next. That is our program for that. You are the missionary. That's what I want to tell you. You are a missionary for this. Next. Go or send. Next. Thank you. This is how God has been using me and Kamala. We only have two options. Either you go and do this. If you cannot go, send someone. I have 20,000 plus grassroots workers. 500 staff working in seven stations operating from seven stations like Delhi, Bombay, Calcutta, Gauhati, Bhopal, Hyderabad, and Chennai. They're all together 500. They train people, they prepare curriculum materials, tools, and then they will give oversight, they evaluate, all that kind of work they do. But grassroots workers are 20,000 plus. It's a huge work. And that's the reason I want to encourage the churches, either you go and get involved, engaged in the work of the gospel, and bring honor and glory to God and see that our beautiful land of India is transformed for Christ in our lifetime, in our generation. God bless you. Thank you very much. Check. All right. So thank you so much, Dr. Chiranjivi. And uh, we are, uh, I mean, one thing that really impressed me is the strategies that you have uh, and the way you're working, you know, with strategy 
uh, reaching our nation. And I think as a church, uh, we also need to think strategically how we can impact our own city and cities across our nation. Amen? Let's rise to our feet. Now, uh, I know today is uh, Father's Day. And uh, this morning, I also want to welcome... Um, Dr. Ashish Naidu, he's actually my own cousin. Ashish, come on up. <laughs> and he has just the same name. He's, he's an associate professor of theology at uh, Talbot uh, Biola University uh, uh, based in California, and he just happened to visit the same day. So I thought, you know, just take a moment to uh, greet him, welcome him. And, you know, today's Father's Day. So Ashish, I'll ask you to pray for all the fathers. Yeah, so... Uh, let's, uh, he's going to pray over us, pray for all the fathers, just bless us, and uh, then we will uh, close and dismiss. So, fathers, God bless you. We're going to just pray for you, and Ashish will just lead us in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, how we praise and thank you for reminding us through our brother here, Dr. Chiranjeevi, the need that there is in India, and for the way the gospel is being preached in every town and city and village. We thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit who is moving in this country and working to bring glory to your name. Help us, Lord, to partner in the gospel. Churches, Bible colleges, institutes, missions, organizations, help us all to work together so that the gospel might reach everyone. And today, Lord, in a very special way, we come before you asking for your blessing upon the fathers of this church here, All People's Church. We thank you, Lord, for the way you've blessed us and the privilege you've given us and the responsibility that you've given us to serve as fathers. It's truly a, a, a vital role that we play as leaders of our families, as high priests of our families. And help us, Lord, to do what you've called us to do. Equip us by your grace, enable us by your power, and use us as instruments so that your name might be glorified. To this end, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Thank you so much. So we're just going to close now. If those of you who need prayer, ministry, we'll be available to uh, pray with you. Uh, let's just close. Father, we just thank you so much for this time. And I just pronounce your blessing, Father, upon your people. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God, our Father, and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with each of us always. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here this morning. Have a great Sunday. See you again.